trying to re-preach because Jay did a great job, but somebody needed to hear that. The baby, they needed to hear that today. Uh -huh. Amen. Give it up. Look at somebody and say, give it up. Give it up. All right. Give it. Look at them. They can't let the world go. I mean it. She's helping. <laughs> Hold on, baby. Don't let it go. That's Lot's wife. <sighs> Amen. Our world is fashioned to make us love ourselves and cater to our own happiness. However, this is not the way Christians should view things. Christians should not love the world or the things that the world has to offer. All of it is what? Vanity according to the Bible. We should not love anything on this earth like that. You tell your dad, hey, I'm taking this game system. I'm putting it somewhere. Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm putting it somewhere. Right. They love it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. 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 Walking around like just a crackhead. What's wrong with you? I don't have nothing to do. Oh, you don't have anything to do. Don't say that in my house. Don't say that in my house. Yeah. Took the Nintendo from him. Took the, what they call that little one, the Switch. That, that's cold, too. You can hook it to the TV and need a big, big, big console. Then you bring it, little joystick, all that. You take it from him. Ah! They love it. Why can't I take it? Let me see your iPad. Ah! What? what is on there that you don't want me to see? You're not supposed to love the world like that. Amen. Let me play the game with you. Come on, son. Let me play uh, the, the, the Fortnite. You know I me play with you. I want to play with you. Nah, that's all right, daddy. You don't have to play. No, nah, I want to play. Matter of fact, let me wear the little thing you wearing while I play. That's all right, daddy. I, I, I decided <laughs> that I don't need this game system <laughs> no more. <laughs> it's just as long as you don't play with me. I've, de I've decided. See, you came trying to play, but I'd already decided <laughs> that it's best. <laughs> That you take this and put it somewhere else. I, I, I decided. I was thinking about that yesterday. And, and the Lord, it was the Lord dropped it in my spirit. <laughs> now I really want to play. So I want to hear what y'all are talking about. I want to see what's popping up on the screen. And when you take it, they're young. Just take it. They will get, just like they start liking it, they'll forget about it. All my friends on it. If all your friends want to jump off a cliff, you're going to jump off of it. That still works in 2023. That's an old saying. That old caveman saying. It works in 2023. Because you want your friend. Are your friends going to feed you? When was the last time your friend said, hey, man? Let me take you shopping and buy all your clothes. But we can't fall in love with these things. We can't fall in love with the world. Man, if there's a great blackout, we ought to be all okay. That's more time with the Lord. Amen by candlelight, Bible days relationship. Light them candles, baby. We had them anyway because we the electricity is unstable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And I'm, it may not get paid this month, so we got candles on standby. Let's use those. Amen. But it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You go a few days. After you go so long, you're not going to miss it anymore. Yeah. That's what a fast is. Uh-oh. See how I weave that in there? Some of y'all need to go on the e-fast anyway. 
Turn it, just turn stuff off. Social media fast. Turn off the opinions. That's all right. Hey man, I know when I'm I know when I'm too concerned about what people think, and I'll go on a social media fast. Last one I went on for 30, 90 days. It was so good, I don't care now, still. And that was two years ago. I don't care what folks say. But you gotta do that. You gotta detach yourself from people's opinions sometimes. Go on a fast. But you can't love the world like that. Christians should not love the world or the things that the world has to offer because all of it is vanity. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 2 and 11, then I looked on all the works that my hand had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was what? Vanity. Nothing. No, it meant nothing. All was vanity and what? Vexation, Vexation of spirit. And there was how many prophets? How, mu how much of it was worth anything? He said there is no prophet under the sun. Nothing we doing now is for profit. It's not going to profit you any. The love of things can hurt us in our walk with the Lord. If we value our own lives more than we value the lives of others, then we are not where Christ wants us to be. 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in it. And it's not instant. It's always progressive. It takes a while. It takes a while for you to get desensitized to other people's needs and what other people, why you're really here. What other people need from you. It takes a while. First, you start out when you got saved. Oh, I just want to help everybody. Everybody heard about the Lord. Now, every time you pray, you praying about you. What you need. What you want. What you desire. You falling in love with the world. Yeah. So you can't love or value your own life more than you value the lives of others. Amen. But if you love the world... You're going to love the world. You're going to love yourself. I taught that last week. You shouldn't be working for yourself. You should be working for others. It's how I get my self-fulfillment. What, what are you fulfilling? You're a slave. What's fulfilling about that? Your home should be fulfilling. Your wife, your husband should be what is fulfilling. Your children should be what is fulfilling. You should be fulfilled from those things. Not work. Not a career. Amen. Now, it's okay to work because that's how you get money. But you don't fall in love with getting money. Amen. Then you find yourself working more and spending less time with your family. Can I keep preaching? People today tend to look out for themselves instead of others. But Christ always cared more for the needs of others than his own. Matthew 9 and 36 says, but when the multitude, when he saw the multitudes, because he was going somewhere else. But when he saw them, the Bible said he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. So Jesus said, you know what? Let me be with them and help them. Because he was moved with what? Compassion. Compassion is how you feel about your fellow man. This is how you feel about others. Amen. You can't be an introverted believer. Uh-oh. Now you got to get outside your head and talk to somebody. The only way you're going to learn anything is from somebody. Amen. You're going to learn it from someone else's experience. You come to church so the pastor can teach you based on what God is speaking to him. That's how you learn in church. Amen. Amen. You can read the same stuff yourself at home. But when the pastor preaches it, somehow it gets applicable to you. 
it gets more applicable to you. That's God's design. It's also his design for you to learn. A man, a, a man can't learn how to be a man from a woman. You're going to need a man. So woman, if you're a single mother, you can't teach your children to hate men like you do. You teach your boy to hate men, he'll never learn how to be one. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. But Jesus was moved. He was moved with compassion because the people fainted and didn't have anybody to help them. So he said, you know what? I'm just going to help them. I'm going to be there. And that's our example. Amen. The word of God tells us that in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold. This means that there will be few that will be willing to give up all for the sake of Christ. Today, there are so many that have abandoned this kind of agape love. They're trying to get money. And you know, money don't help. Well, it'll help you if you don't have none. But being rich <laughs> is not the answer. It, on, it will only amplify all of the problems. Yeah. And there is no reason any Christian should desire to be rich. Oh, half the audience is clapping on that one. Wait a minute, Pastor, now. The prophet came to town and laid hands on me. Then he touched my wallet. And he spoke and said that God had a million dollars. Why is it always a million dollars? A million dollars don't make you rich. He said that I would get a million dollars if I sold a $10,000 seed. Well, he got a million before the night was up. <laughs> he got a million. But yeah, anybody desiring that, anyone desiring to be rich, you need to check that because that's not from God. If you have the desire in your heart to be famous, Satan put it there. Oh, I'm preaching now. This is my vision, my dream. I'm going to manifest this on my dream board. Who gave you the dream? God is not, amen. He's not speaking to you, telling you that you should be rich or famous Amen. only the devil says those things Amen. Amen. Amen so if those are the things that you are pursuing you need to check it Amen. 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 people don't like to hear that Matthew 24 and 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall what so why is the love of many waxing cold? Because of sin. It said because sin will be bountiful or a lot of it, the love of many are going to wax cold. Now what does sin have to do with the love of many? Well, when you sin, you're selfish. Yeah, you're thinking about yourself and not how it affects other people. That makes your love wax cold. Can I keep preaching in here? This is the kind of message I'm not looking for a whole bunch of hand claps and stuff. But it's the truth anyhow. Only those that love the way God loves are fit to be used by him. When you seek to please yourself and get what you want, you will miss God's plan and continue to walk in selfishness and greed. Y'all, this is a dirty shame. Amen. I remember when Kurt Franklin, and not many can say this, but I was there, when he told me there was nothing more important to him than Jesus Christ. He said, this, that's it. I'm not getting out there 
that what God thinks is more important. That's what he said. That's what he told me. So I feel the same way. And they just showed me a clip of him saying, I could care less what the Christian church thinks about what I'm doing. Care less about what the Christian community thinks of me. I could care less. Talking of the show where he's basically over couples having sex in the house. Now he's using profanity. Most people don't know when it comes to love, Tam and I, the unofficial matchmakers. And now we're switching up the game, bringing our matchmaking expertise to the TV screen. Get naked on the first day. We will share our wisdom when it comes to getting and maintaining a healthy, thriving relationship. It's time to find the one. Do you want to come to the mansion? Me and my girl Tammy, we're going to switch up the game a bit right here. Yeah. We're going to take an eligible bachelor and an eligible bachelorette. They both have struggled to find that special someone. We're going to make them live together as they both go on a mission to seek and find love. love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bring the best singles Atlanta has to offer for dates. Lord have mercy. Activities <laughs> to see if we can help Brandon Ashley find the one. Let's get this party started. All right, now. I like that. Y'all working hard. Working for love. I know you so nice and so sweet, but I want to grab them <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> what? I got a bullet on my back. You don't think I got one on mine? It's a dating experience unlike any other. With shocking twists. I just want you to be aware that it's game out here. That no one saw coming. What the <laughs> Let's get it. I'm it. I'm the it. I am the one. I am the one. Yeah, I'm the one. And without further ado, the person that I'm going to choose to be the one. This is one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life. I am choosing. So now he's using foul language on the show. He's matchmaking by allowing all of these random couples to sleep together to see if they want to be together by sleeping together in the same house. And he said, I could care less what the Christian church thinks. That's greed. That's greed. Now, when you fall in love with the world, you got to please the world. If you want the money to be rich, you got to do what the world says. Yeah. This greed will lead to sin. And right after that, it's going to lead to what? Shame. Because the devil don't forget what you said. So you really want to make the devil mad? Say you love the Lord. Make a vow to the Lord. Remember that old song? I made a vow to the Lord and I won't turn. Made a vow to the Lord. Y'all know I was singing. Did y'all like that? Boy, he about to jump up. Yeah, you made a vow to the Lord. The devil heard you and he hasn't forgot. So you live in the life, you doing all this, and the devil's like, oh, I'm just waiting for the opportunity to snatch him down and embarrass him because he said he loved the Lord. He's the devil! He has no friends. How you friends with the devil? And you got a contract and y'all, you, you hanging with the Illuminati. And they gonna do you right? They're devils. They'll make you and your wife have a child just so they can sacrifice it. Can I preach in here? Yes, this greed will lead to sin and eventually shame. However, denying your fleshly wants and having God's desires keeps you from what? 
fallen. Being saved means you got to deny your fleshly wants. That's in the definition. Oh, let me go over here because this, this section. Ooh, man, y'all all the way around this corner. Huh? Yeah! Let me get loud over here. You got to deny your fleshly wants. That's, that's what being saved is. You can't do everything that feels good. You can't do most things that feel good. <laughs> Amen? You got to deny your flesh. That's being saved. I can't go. I can't do that. I can't listen to that. I can't watch that. I can't wear that. I definitely can't say that. Why? Because I'm saved. And I got to deny that part of me. Because if you get that part of me going, you ain't going to be able to pull the rest of me back. There's some old sins attached to that behavior. I can't start that up again. Amen. When I used to cuss like that, I was doing a whole lot of other stuff. So if I just start the little cussing, saying hell every now and then, it's going to lead to another word. Then another word, then all the sins that was a part of that old man are going to come back through the doorway of that word. See, that's what salvation is. I don't need to go back. I can't put that blouse on. When I put that blouse on, phone numbers just fall out of the pockets. That show you what I was doing in that blouse. I can't wear them high heel boots. I'm a man. When I was wearing those, that's when I was a Prince fan. Prince is dead. He's dead. I can't wear the high heel boots no more. Amen. Please throw them away. I don't want you even wrestling. I don't want you wrestling that with that, with, with the idea of high heel boots. I, Sharon said, and don't bring them to the swap. <laughs> Amen. Unless a woman want them. Anybody wear a size 13? <laughs> High heel boot. But some stuff you can't wear no more. Amen. Amen. That was a part of your old man. The old way. That's going to cause a pathway to who you used to be. And that's all the devil needs is just a few things. Man, if I can get you listening to that old jam. See, that's why I preach. Man, that's why I preach against stuff. Amen. I preach against it. Just turn it all off. I said somebody in here, I sent them a clip or something and some music was on it. They said, Pastor, boots and overcoat. You better unsend that. Yeah, but that wasn't, you know, that, that song didn't, it didn't affect me. I never listened to them. But some folks, no, nah, man, you can't play that. Amen. You can't play Alexander O'Neill. <laughs> Amen. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can't even say all the days of the week too fast. You just... You got to leave Saturday out. You got to get the Friday and just stop. You said too fast. I'm trying to teach the kids the days of the week. Yeah, but don't you rest on Saturday. Young folks looking like, what is he talking about? Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. That, that music, it just comes back, don't it? You can't go to your wife and say, do you know what today is? Bling, ding, 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 ding. I mean, it just goes in your head. <laughs> it's our anniversary. <laughs> you can't say it. It's a certain way you say it. Just don't say, do you know? Just say, baby, it's our anniversary today. Don't say, do you know what today is? Bling, 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 bling. 
I preach against it. Hey! And then you start listening to that, you start listening, thinking, you ain't thinking about your anniversary. Because when you were, you wasn't listening to that song when you was married. I know I'm preaching. You know I'm telling the truth. Then, uh oh, now, what's the next song? Come on after that. Lay your head on your pillow. The pillow song. Same group, same album. I had the album. God took it from me. Me and my wife was saving church listening to that. Had to turn it off. I had to turn it off. Then God began to just show me all of this stuff, how it was all intertwined in frequencies and different things and how the heart of the person that recorded it is actually with it and never leaves it. The person that made the music and what was going on in the studio when they did it, all of that is still attached to it. That's why your behavior changed behind it. It's spiritual. Don't play with it now. Nah, man. <clears throat> well, Pastor, you know, you don't know everything. Why are you in here? Ooh, I wish some of these folk. Ooh, that's all right. I turned the hourglass over. You won't be here long. This greed will lead. To sin and eventually the time. However, denying your flesh and having. So you got to deny those things. Yeah, you was at a wedding and they got the book and somebody sent me a video of a reception. And, ah, you know, I wasn't trying to do it. I wasn't trying to cha-cha. I just, they just, they came and got me. And just, and the beat just yanked me over into the line. And just, I said, well, that's why I don't go to receptions. I come do the wedding if it's somebody I've counseled or whatever but I'm not staying amen and I love y'all and you know but I don't know what your relatives gonna want to do I know you I don't know them you bringing folk from out of town and stuff that I ain't never met cousin Willie he carry a red cup everywhere he go he got his red solo cup he brought it himself that's not even the decor of the of the wedding the color is blue it's gold and black. You got a red cup. Y'all cups might not hold the hooch that I'm finna pour in there. <laughs> it might eat through y'all's cups. <laughs> eat the letter it off. The name of the bride and groom. Just gone. What are you drinking? <laughs> But I don't go. I don't mess with receptions, Doc. I ain't going. No. Come on, Pastor. We got to play. No. So I don't know what y'all going to do. And I don't want to be in there with the DJ. All right, everybody ready? To... No. No, I'm not. I'm not ready. Have me on a viral video. Because if you keep playing it, and if I'm sitting in there, I'm going to get up and get down with everybody else. That's why I ain't going. Music has the same effect on me. The same effect. Boots and an overcoat. I can't listen to that, brother. I got struggles with that stuff. Man, that stuff almost ruined my marriage. I ain't listening to that. It ain't worth it. Some of y'all got to learn the hard way. Music, how you thinking about other folk you ain't with? It's designed to do that. I don't know how these slides turn into the truth behind hip hop, but it's coming out, I guess, because we, I don't know. However, denying your fleshly wants and having good desires keeps you from falling. 1 John 2 and 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is what? That's that desire to be rich. That's the lust of the eye. I mean, no, that's the pride of life. To be rich, to be famous. 
You only want to do that so people can say, ooh, you rich. Ooh, you famous. Ain't nobody rich and don't tell nobody. <laughs> Until a person learns how to die to their own agenda, they will constantly merge the plan of God with their own plans and desires. That's a terrible place because then when you talk to them, they think they're okay. But this creates a prideful person. And that prideful person has to pretend to be who they truly desire to be. So what pride does, it stops you from being able to be helped. <laughs> because you can't be helped because your disposition is, no, I'm already okay. Because pride has told you you're okay or pride has told you you have to pretend to be okay because you can't let everyone know how you really feel. See, it's bad when you want to be rich and want to be famous so bad that you do things that are sinful, demonic, devilish, and some of them just stink nasty. You did this stuff and then you come to find out it wasn't worth it. But you can't go tell folks it's not worth it because you gave up everything to get it. So you got to pretend now. I'm preaching. Devil's not going to give you anything without embarrassing you. Because we are in a flesh body, we must deny ourselves how often? Daily. Daily. And make sure that we are not living just for ourselves. Yeah. Romans 8 and 13. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, what will happen? You will live. Peter! was a man that thought he loved God more than everyone else. He bragged on his love and even went to great lengths to prove his love by cutting the ear of the soldier. Don't you touch my savior! Cut the ear off. He ain't your savior. You said that to be seen. You said that to prove something. Amen. Boy, if I could tell you all the folk, well, y'all heard them. They came in here and said it. I die for him. I jump in front of a bullet. Oh, this is my pastor. Oh, you better not mess with him. Now they ain't messing with me. <laughs> Goofy self. Shut up. You don't know what you'll do. And that's what Jesus put the ear up back on him. And I know Jesus felt this. Peter, you don't even know what you're doing. Put your sword up. If you live by this sword, you, you're going to die by the sword. Amen. And people take that out of context. And that don't mean you can't have your gap. That's not what he was saying. He said that if... You live by the sword. What you just did to this man unjustly because your, your uh, emotions weren't right or your feelings or your motive wasn't right, you'll die the same way. Peter was a man that thought he loved God. And the sword came from Jesus. Jesus armed him with the sword. So I don't have a problem with you having the sword and having my back. And when it's time to slice and dice, I'll let you know. But this is not the time because you're not telling the truth. You don't really love me like that. You're thinking about yourself. Matthew 26 and 33, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I, I will never be offended. No, nah, man. Amen. Peter.
Peter swore that he could never betray Christ because he loved him so much. But Peter's love was a what? Pride filled. Listen to this. Selfish love and not godly love. Peter wasn't ready to give up everything for Christ's sake. He wasn't in love with Christ at all. He was in love with the power of Christ and how being with Christ made him feel. Some folks in this church, you're not here because you love me. You're here because you feel some authority from me and you're trying to borrow it. Makes you feel good. Had people all around me. That's what they felt. They like being around G. Craig because he's going to say what he means. He's traveling. Folk know him. So if I'm around him, I'm going to get to experience some of that. But when the testing comes, when the trials come, when they're ready to take me out, do you still know me? Do you still love me? I'm preaching it here. Yeah. Yeah. They were in love with the way Christ made them feel. Some folks in love with the way God make them feel. That's a black Hebrew Israelite. He just in love with the way God make them feel. Because God is a higher authority than everybody else. So I can throw God on the white man. You don't love him. If you love him, you'd love his son. You can't love me if you don't love Landon. You hate Landon, you hate me. You don't love Jonathan, you don't love me. Amen. I know I'm preaching in here. Amen. Can I sit down right here and preach the rest of this sermon? That's how for sure I am about what is being said. Amen. If he really loved Christ, he would not have denied him. When the testing came, and the second time the cock crew, Peter called to mind the words that Jesus said to him, before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me three times. And when he thought thereon, he wept. It came back to him. What Jesus, Jesus said, man, you don't love me like that. Because before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Last time he was cussing denying him. I don't know who he is. Lady said, but I saw you with him. That wasn't me. This is the one that loved him so much and said he'd never be offended. That he would die for it. Cut a dude's ear off. They should have grabbed Peter and cut his ear off. You can't have an ear now. Because you unjustly cut this man's ear off. You wasn't really feeling what you said you were feeling. But then the Bible tells us Peter had a change of heart after that. After he learned that his love was superficial and not spiritual. Christ appeared to him and told him that if he really loved him, give up his own life for his people. Do what I did. Feed my sheep. You love me, Peter, three times, then feed my sheep. We read that like, oh, he's just telling you to preach. No, he's not. He's telling you to die. Die. They knew what would happen if he preached. If he fed the sheep, he knew he would be crucified at just like it. Matter of fact, he requested to be crucified upside down because he didn't want to eat. He didn't want his death to even resemble the Savior. That's how much he loved Jesus. That he had a change of heart. Christ appeared to him and told him to just feed my sheep. Then Peter then became a great witness for Christ and died upholding his name because he gave up his own wants and needs for the needs of God's people. Yeah. Giving up our lives for others is the highest place that we can attain in Christ. John 15 and 13. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man does what? Let me make this real to you, men in here, fathers. 
You're going to have to have tough conversations with your wife and your children. Amen. That's laying down Amen. your life. Yes, you got to be willing to feel whatever they're putting out to you for saying that. Sometimes your kid's going to be mad at you. Sometimes your wife's going to be angry at you. But you still got to stand on what God says no matter what. Amen. This is the line. And I can't cross it. So I just got to give up, maybe give up my own happiness for a minute and suffer through this. You're not going to like this. You're not going to like what I'm saying. You're not. But then if she loves you, if they love you, they'll eventually understand. But you still, you still have to give your life up and draw the line. I got to do it every Sunday. Just think if I got up and preached, worried about what folks thought. You get half truths in here. What if I got up and preached so we could grow the membership? I'd have to preach half truths. I'd have to conceal some things and not speak the actual words God is saying. But I got to give my life up every time I grab this microphone. I got to give it up. Amen. My wife will tell you the times I got to cry and just deal with people. I mean, I just have to sacrifice it. Oh, y'all going to kill me? Well, let me tell you what God said. Amen. 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 And you got to be the same way in your home. This is the line, family. Can't cross this line. Amen. 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 No greater love or greater love hath no man, John 15 and 13, than he laid down his life for his friends. Summary! Paul said that he gave up all and counted it all as gain. How you give up and it's gain? That means it didn't mean anything in the first place. just not going to be 30, 40, and 50 years old talking about what I'm going to get. At some point, I got what I'm getting. Oh, me. And it's okay. Is my wife okay? Are my children okay? Then I've got it. All the other stuff that just, hey. I'm not preaching against things. But man, don't, uh, come on, now you got to give up everything when it comes to this because you don't know what they're going to, they're going to attach your wildest dream to something satanic and make you do something for the devil to get it. Then what are you going to do? Amen. You know, y'all go to restaurants now. Uh, that'll be a 30 minute wait but there's 20 tables empty why am I waiting 30 minutes they don't have any employees they have to shut the dog house down the dog house in the Highlands that's like the spot they shut it down because they couldn't get nobody to work it it shut down for months Breon Landon went and welcomed them back. <laughs> he probably had to shut down again. <laughs> the way y'all was eating. But yeah, they shut it down. A lot of businesses, there's no employees. Go to the bank, you got to wait a day. You got to take a sack lunch to the bank. And the one teller. Go buy a car. Oh, we don't have no cars. You a car place. Where everybody going? Internet. Everybody's going to the internet. Everybody's trying to be an influencer. Because they want to get influencer money. They don't know it's a trap. It's an antichrist trap. Because once you base your whole salary living everything on that internet, they're going to come tell you the only way you can get in your account. There's no way we can authenticate you. 
robots, bots, fake accounts, everything. We don't know if it's you. The only way we can authenticate you is this mark. the devil see y'all see that now that was the devil this bio mark bio mark chip insert most people already have it inside of it haven't been activated but it's in there it builds itself I showed y'all that yeah and that's the only way you'll be able to log into your account but that's my job that's my money that's all I have we know that's why we did that. Because if you can walk to your job, physically go to your job, then we lose control of that. But if you got to log into your job, man, I'm preaching on all kind of stuff today. Y'all picked a great day to come to church. <laughs> But you got to be willing, when you can't log in that account, okay, what's in the cupboard? Then after we finish eating that, what's in the refrigerator? And after that, all right, it's been good. Time for me to go to my real home. My home in glory where I ain't got to deal with this no more. I ain't got to deal with no antichrist. I ain't got to deal with no mark of the beast. I ain't got to deal with no devil. Somebody in there like, but man, my stuff. You in love with it. We must remember that whatever we give up for Christ's sake will be returned to us a hundredfold. In this life. One of the passages where this is said, he said, in this life, a hundredfold, whatever you give up. What does he mean by that? Well, the friends you gave up, you're going to have the joy of having a hundredfold of those friends. <laughs> the job you turn down, hundredfold job, going to be a hundred times better. Amen. God spoke this scripture to me explicitly when I was, I had a recording contract in front of me. One of the many that I had, had one in front of me. Wanted to sign it so bad, but I knew what the Lord was going to do. This is the first time I actually got the contract and brought it. I, I mean, had it with me. And I'm just looking and I say, God, I want to sign this. Because, man, I don't have anything. I'm broke. And he told me, don't sign that. He said, I'm going to give you a hundredfold what that contract is saying. Amen. So you're going to get it a hundredfold. Whatever feeling you were looking for from that contract, I'm going to give you a hundredfold. I said, so my family's going to be good. I'm going to have a, my marriage and everything. He said, a hundredfold. Yeah. You think I regret it now? You see how I'm walking? Can't walk like this if you sign that contract. Now, I'm not going to do the banana back walk you got to have when you sign it. No, I can't even fake that. I'm walking. This is how I walk, Walter. Because I didn't sign it. And God has done everything he promised. My son's right there. Son's right over there. Wife right there. Daughter's in church probably right now. God kept them in the fold for me. But not just for me, for them. My decision would have affected... My family would have been crazy if I had signed that. And I don't want no crazy family. You can get a crazy family. I don't want no crazy family. I want a family that abides by God's words, his rules, his regulations. I want them to go to heaven when they die. I want them to be blessed in this life. That's a hundredfold. That's a hundredfold. I want them to know what truth is. 
what truth feels like, what truth really means. God is not punishing us for serving him. What's wrong with you? If I give this up, I always got to give up. That's not a punishment. It's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Once you lose your tail, you can't ever get it back. That's, that's the punishment. You crazy. He's trying to get us to invest and then reap 100 times the investment. He's a hundred times. Hundred times the feeling. People look at giving up things for Christ with the wrong perspective. Whatever you give up will be multiplied and in return. This is a blessing of God and we must tap into it. There is nothing in this earth as precious to God as we are. And he is willing to bless us if we only obey him. Amen. We must learn that if we love the world, then we do not have the love of God in us. But if we love him enough to give up the world for him, then we are in a place to be used by him. Amen. 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 Mark 10 and 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he that has done those things shall receive a hundredfold now when? In this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands. But with what? You're going to get it with persecutions, though. And in the world to come, you're going to get what? Eternal life. Because many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, the word will preach. Hallelujah. The struggle is real. Giving up all for Christ's sake. That's the question. Can you do it? Will you do it? Do you want to do it? If that's you, you've been maybe struggling with it and you just want it more definitive in your heart. Hey, there's some things I just got to let go of and give up if I'm going to be successful in this thing. If that's you, I want to pray with you and believe God with you. Just come on up. Come on up. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe things in my family aren't good. Did you come up here and get them good? Give them good. Maybe there's something in your life you got to give up. Something in your life that's in the way. Something, hey, there's a decision you have to make. If you make this decision, man... If you make it for the money and not for what God wants, you're going to make the wrong choice. So, Pastor, I need power. I need strength. I need the power of the Lord so that I can make the right choice. Some things I just have to give up. Oh, it's been fun. Oh, it's been good. Oh, it's been real. But I got to give it up. Oh, man. I wish I had never started it. Well, you did. Now you got to give it up. You know what Christ is speaking to you about. So everyone just bow your heads. That what he is speaking to you about caused you to walk up here. That it's time to let it go. That what he has spoken to you. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the truth of this message. Thank you, Father God, for your word going forth today. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that your truth came at this time. And now that it has come, it's arrested my heart. 
It's arrested our thoughts. It's arrested our feelings. It's arrested our emotions. It's just brought everything to a screeching halt now. And now I got to make the tough choice, the tough decision. And Father, whatever it is that you need us to do, we'll do. Whatever it is that you need us to give up, we'll give it up. There is nothing worth coming between us and you. And absolutely, positively, everything we have came from you. Think about that. While you're up here with your heads bowed, think about where you are now. And the part God played in that. Look at what happened to you. Look at where you are. Look at how you're blessed. Look at how you could have been like your friends, family members, others out there just with no direction, not knowing which way to go, not knowing where they're going, not knowing who they are. And you know who you are. You've seen the hand of God. Your life is blessed. He's kept you from hurt, harm, danger. He has restored your soul. He's made you feel like somebody on earth. He brought happiness and peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Without him, you would be nowhere. So how dare, how dare you hold on to what he wants you to let go of? No, I'm letting that go. No, I'm good. I'm letting that go. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands all over the building. Father, help us with this. Give us the strength. Give us the courage. Give us the power. Stand strong and be who we're supposed to be. In the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.